LeBron's first game back may not have started like many expected, but he sure did finish it out in style. Kendrick, you have been saying that LeBron is your MVP this season, but we know that performance last night won't matter toward the voting since these games don't count toward any regular season awards. Not just for LeBron or MVP, but for any of the postseason awards. Do you think not counting the seeding games is fair or foul? Uh, it's it's fair. I mean, listen. I had I had LeBron James as my MVP before the bubble, so these eight games wouldn't have made a difference in my opinion. And by the way, Rachel, that was one of the best defensive performances I've seen out of LeBron James in the last three years. He really took pride in go in guarding Kawhi Leonard in that fourth quarter and Paul George throughout the game when he did match up on him. But no. I had all my uh, uh, MVP. I had my MVP uh, vote before the pandemic. It was LeBron James. I'm standing <laughs> with it right now. Although I know you're going with Giannis and maybe Paul is too. <laughs> but when you look at LeBron James in the MVP, he's the most valuable player to his team. That's that's <laughs> what it is. Giannis is the most dominant player. Two separate categories. I'm gonna leave it at that. Perk, I love you and all, but. LeBron James might not even be the most valuable player on this team. Did you watch what Anthony Davis was doing last night and what he's been doing all year long? You, you Kendrick Perkins, you have him as defensive player of the year. And he's their best offensive player. He leads them in all the categories. Yes, th no, these games shouldn't count toward the MVP because before the pandemic, I had Giannis as my MVP for being dominant, for having the best team, for having the best defense, for having the best offense. And he doesn't have a secondary player that LeBron has in <laughs> Anthony Davis. Come on now. Hey, but see, but see, that's the problem I have. The goalposts move every year when it comes down to the MVP. I can remember when Steve Nash won the MVP, averaging 15 points and 10 assists. Amari Stoudemire was the leading scorer on that team. But all of a sudden, now LeBron James, he have his team at the number one spot. And by the way, Anthony Davis came out, Paul Pierce, and said that LeBron James was the MVP when he could have made a, a, a case for himself to be the MVP. P, what are you talking about? Listen, they both have great impact, but no one is doing a very better carrying job than Ante DeCumpo, man. Come on. You take him out of the lineup. And what do the Milwaukee Bucks have? If you take LeBron out of the lineup, if you take LeBron out of the lineup, you still got Anthony Davis who could carry you to some wins. Oh, my God, P. <laughs> if you take LeBron off the Lakers, if you take LeBron off the Lakers, they will probably be an eight seed or in the lottery. And if you, you take, take if you take the, Greek uh, Freak out, if, if they, you, they probably if, won't even make the playoffs. They, they, will, they probably you, won't make man, the playoffs. Man, they'll be a... What? They would be a fourth to fifth seed, Paul. No, Are you no crazy? Shot. No shot. Oh, man, I can't believe you today, man. I don't All know. Right, what, okay. what, All right. what kind of cereal well, you ate this morning, dude? I'm not shocked to find either one of you on either side of this debate. <laughs> Paul, I do want to ask you about your old team, though, the Clippers. <laughs> they were without Lou Will. They were without Montrez Harrell. But it was still a very close game, Kate, down to the final 20 seconds. Do you think that Clippers fans should be encouraged or discouraged from seeing their team last night? I'm very encouraged. You talk about two key components to the Clippers, 20-point scores on the Clippers, huge impact. I mean, this is a great sign for the Clippers. If they played this tough to the Lakers last night and they don't have key contributors, these, these two guys that we're talking about are going to be in the, in the game toward the end of the game and their clutch lined up. And so when you're missing that element, it's tough to beat the Lakers with LeBron and AD, but you add that element of Lou Williams, 20 points a night, a guy who you can give the ball and say, go ahead and get us a bucket at the end of the game. A guy in Montrez Harrell who could be more physical with Anthony Davis and not allow him to go out there and do whatever he wants. That's a big factor. I'm encouraged if I'm the Clippers. Well, I, I tell you what, just to piggyback off of you, Paul, Guess what? The Lakers wish Lou Will would have played, especially LeBron, because they would have called him up in the high pick and roll and got Lou Will to switch. And I guarantee you LeBron would have had 30 points last night. They was hoping Lou Will would have played where they could have put him in pick and rolls like they used to do Steph Curry. Listen, when you talk about the comparison between the Los Angeles Clippers and the Los Angeles Lakers, uh, yes, 
Montrez Harrell and Lou Will do make up a big part of that. Both of them six man of the year candidates. But I tell you what, no one still could stop Anthony Davis. No one. No one in the NBA. I don't even care who you talking about. Matter of fact, the only person that probably could have stopped him in the past 10 years, I'm sitting right here in this seat <laughs> on the jump. So guess what? There's nobody else could stop him right now. So when I'm looking at AD, hey, for real though, P and Rachel, AD is one of one, and the closest person that I think mim that he mimics is Kevin Garnett. We've never seen nothing like Anthony Davis. Nah. <laughs> well, his versatility was certainly oh, on display last night. I was so impressed. Of course, I don't think that the Lakers want him to have to go out and get 34 a game, so it'll be interesting to see how this rides out during these seeding games. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.